Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. This is the November Art Snacks regular tier. What we're gonna do is the same thing we did for the previous two. I am going to open this. I am going to live react to what's in it. We will then pause so that I can look up what is different about the plus box. We will no box art box style upgrade this and then it will be a normal art supply subscription video for this channel. Reminder of how this works on this channel, I'm going to tell you what the card says about these items and I'm going to give you the suggested manufacturer price in the local currency for the box. This is an American company, so this will be MSRPs in US dollars. I will have all of that recorded in the description box down below along with conversions to Canadian dollars and British pounds. I will also have all of the calculations for what this is worth versus what it costs for you to get it based on which country you're in for those three currency regions and which subscription package you picked. I will also be looking these up on major online retailers for those currency regions, such as Dick Flick, Curry's, or Jackson's, and I will also get you a real world hunting shopping total to compare with the MSRP total. All right, first thing out of the box, there is a $5 off subscription code. I will have this in the description box. Go look for it. Okay, so for the second month in a row, we are getting a random color of a liquid ink. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. Ironically, last month when I said I saw a sneak peek preview in an email from these guys, this is what I saw. So it's just coincidence that the previous box had the Liquitex acrylic ink. This is definitely what I saw. So it's going to be watercolor themed. Interesting. Here's this month's sticker, zigzags. So we have two Faber-Castell gelatos. I have used these before. I own exactly two of them and one of them is kind of a transparent color. So nice addition to the collection. I almost have the primaries now. I have like a mango orange yellow. This is blood orange and metallic blueberry. And we have a water brush from Derwent. So this appears to be like any old water brush. You open up this barrel. Why does it screw into, it looks like it screws up here. I don't think it's supposed to. Definitely detaches down here like any other brush. So you put your water in the reservoir here, you screw it back together, and you just push on this part when you want a little bit of water to come through the bristles. Very good for travel, very good if you want a bit of loose control on your watercolor. I I was obsessed with water brush pens like this when I first got them, and then I've kind of gone back to regular brushes. You have a lot more control with a regular brush, but these are convenient if you're traveling because you can have all of your water in your reservoir. I do still find that I want water to rinse the brush off in because if I'm squeezing water through to rinse the brush then I'm using all of the painting water and then it doesn't last very long. Not very convenient. The difference between this one and a lot of water brushes I've tried is this is not squeezable. This is fairly firm. You're only going to squeeze and get water here so that should mitigate the problem of accidentally releasing more water through the brush and this is also a very different plastic. It's very grippy. It's probably going to make it comfortable to hold, except honestly, something like this being so thick up here, I'm going to hold down here. And this, the end of this brush, it looks like about a number six round. Yeah, I'd say that's about a number six. So we're going to look at the card in just a sec, but unless something has gone wrong, we have four items out of this. We have two gelatos. These are soft wax crayons that are water soluble. And we have one liquid Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrate Watercolor. Between these, we do have primaries. We should be able to do some interesting mixing. They are very different mediums though. So let's, let's see how mixing goes. Normally this box you get like five items, maybe even six items. This is kind of unusual in my experience to have only four. Let's gather up whatever was different for the plus box. And then I will read you this card and whatever the website says for the missing items. So this is indeed all that was in the regular tier I did look. For the plus box they also got another full-size artist material and they got a full-size surface. Their other material is the Caron Dash Neocolor 2 Aquarelle Artist Pastels set of 10. So these are a wax-based pastel crayon whatever you want to call it that are 
water soluble. They also have the Neo Color 1, which are not, and you can combine them for very interesting effects. I have been very tempted to get this set for years and years and years, but they do basically the same thing as Conte sticks. So I have matched these colors as close as I can with these Conte colors, not knowing the color, the names of the colors because they just have numbers on the sticks and the uh, packaging doesn't say anything. <laughs> so we are going to use water-soluble Conte sticks, water-soluble Faber-Castell gelatos, and water-soluble liquid radiant watercolor ink. The plus surface is the Winsor Newton Cold Press Watercolor Paper Pad. This is cold press, so I am a little more free in what I can use. I don't have to bring out the block of fluid again. <laughs> So I am going to use Aquarabel Etival watercolor paper. This is by Claire Fontaine. This is their student line. I do think that this is a very appropriate match and I will explain why in a sec. This of course is going to be a nine by 12 because they send a four sizes whenever they can. This is a five, this came in a scroller box. Honestly, for a project like this where I'm just trying out supplies, I wouldn't be working a four anyway. I would have cut that down. So that's why I have no problem using A5s whenever I do this challenge. All right, let's go ahead and read the card and the website for the missing items while you watch me swatch these things and play around a bit. Derwent push button water brush, three millimeter medium tip. Retail price is $11.49 US. Paint anywhere, anytime with the Derwent push button water brush. Comfortable and convenient, this brush features a handy button that provides easy control of water flow. Its round medium tip is great for building textures and layers. The durable nylon bristles hold their shape well, maintaining performance over time. Two Faber-Castell gelatos. These retail for $2.85 each US, so that's going to be $5.90 if I've done my mental math correctly. You're in for a real treat with the Faber-Castell gelatos. These compact, vibrant pigment sticks are creamy, smooth, and light fast. They have great coverage, easily gliding onto paper, canvas, or wood. Blend the colors with or without water and watch them melt into your artwork. Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrate Watercolor, $7.99 US retail, and this is marked staff favorite. Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrate Watercolor is seriously brilliant. Produced in an extremely concentrated form, this transparent, dye-based watercolor can be used directly from the bottle or diluted with water. It works best for illustration or cartooning on paper surfaces. So just a comment here, dye-based means that this will not be super light fast. Oh, and there's a joke on the card. What color does a book prefer to be? Drum roll, please. Red. The Carandosh Neocolor 2 Aquarelle Artist Pastels set of 10 are listed on the Art Snack Shop, which is usually the MSRP, for $23.85 US. Softer than colored pencil, denser than wax crayons, and water soluble, Carandosh Neocolor 2 Aquarelle Artist Pastels are truly unique. Featuring a high pigment load and excellent light fastness, they can be used for a variety of techniques. Combine wet and dry applications in the same piece, layer light colors over dark, anything goes. This set includes the following colors, black, brown, cobalt, blue, emerald, green, orange, purple, scarlet, violet, white, and yellow. For the paper, Windsor Newton Cold Press Watercolor Paper Pad. Retails for $14.99 US. Windsor Newton's newest watercolor paper is the perfect choice for artists wanting to experiment, sharpen their skills, or work with large quantities of paper. Crafted in Italy, this cold press paper reflects light well, resulting in brightest watercolor paintings. You'll find 12 sheets of 300 GSM paper in your new pad, each made from a mixture of cotton and cellulose. Don't be shy with the water. This durable surface was designed to withstand saturation. Size 9 by 12. The reason I said the student grade paper from Claire Fontaine is a good comparison is because of that line there with the cotton and cellulose mix. Cellulose is wood pulp. The cheapest, most student, child-friendly papers out there are completely wood pulp cellulose, and the most expensive professional papers are completely cotton. This is a blend, which means it's much cheaper to produce, and that means it's cheaper to acquire and purchase and use up, which they also implied. Great for artists wanting to experiment and use a lot of paper. You do tend to have more control over what your paint 
does on a cotton paper versus a cellulose paper if you know what you're doing. You'll also get more vibrant colors on a cotton versus a cellulose paper if you know what you're doing. If you're new to it, it's not going to matter. It doesn't matter. If you're just playing around, I would go with the cheaper stuff. If you really know what you're doing, you're a professional, you probably already have your favorite paper, but I would recommend looking for something that is 100% cotton. I will also note that although this claims that it's going to withstand a lot of water, the cellulose papers do tend to buckle and warp and not flatten down quite as perfectly as cotton papers. You can combat that though. One of the best ways to flatten out your watercolor artwork that has buckled, wait until it's completely dry, put down something to protect it, lay the piece down upside down, mist the back with water, and then put something heavy on it to weigh it down. If you want to speed up the process instead of laying a bunch of like heavy books or something on top of it, you could just lay down a sheet of fabric that is safe for ironing and iron it flat. That will happen a lot faster. You do have to make sure the paper is fairly wet to begin with and you're going to want something down on the other side to protect the paint from transferring onto other things. I've never done it that way, but I've heard that a lot of big artists do it that way. Anyway, moving on. You watched me swatch. You've probably at this point watched me start my piece. I am going to just go ahead and actually do my piece now and the next words you hear from my mouth will be what I think about it after I've worked on it. Reminder, I will have the converted prices, the real world researched prices, and all of the value versus purchase price calculations in the description box down below. I am not sponsored by Art Snacks. I purchased this with my own money. I do have a discount code for the shop that is always in my description. I will bring it up to the top because it's relevant to this one. I will also throw the code, the $5 off code in the description. I am not sure if this is anybody can use it or a one-time use, but this is good until February 14th. It is $5 off any subscription plan with Art Snacks. Whoever gets to it, congratulations. I hope you actually wanted it. Please don't use it and not use it. <laughs> Overall, I think this was a great combination of supplies. As you may or may not be able to tell at this point, I decided to do a poinsettia flower. I really wanted to showcase the brilliant scarlet red I got, and the other colors obviously mixed to make some great greens, and there were other colors to showcase in the Conte set. So I figured a nice Christmassy, wintery season poinsettia would be a great piece to do. <laughs> Actually, I was going to do a scarlet macaw, but I couldn't find any, any pictures that I liked for a scarlet macaw that would cut nicely into the size paper I wanted to do. But yeah, overall, I think this is a great combination. I know that everybody getting these boxes are going to get random colors for the gelatos and the Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolor ink. I think it's probably just luck that I got colors that worked so well together. Sometimes you don't. I hope that everybody liked their colors. If you got the Real Plus box, that 10 set of the Neo Color 2 crayons, those are going to be the same 10 colors no matter what. And I do think I replicated the color selection accurately, but of course, Conte and Neo Color crayons are not exactly the same thing. I think the real ones would have been a lot smoother putting down water effects. I think they probably wouldn't have blended under the finger as much as the drier Contes. It's a trade-off. If you wanted to No Box Art Box replicate this whole box and you don't have anything like a Conte, like a Gelatos, you could really just go with anything water soluble. You could go with watercolor pencils, watercolor markers, straight up watercolors. <laughs> it's definitely really interesting to have something that's more of a crayon type material that can be used both dry and wet and you get such different effects from it. As for the paper, I figure I could probably take or leave the Windsor Newton paper the real box got. The Etival from Claire Fontaine did just fine. That was my last sheet in the pad, so that'll be the last time you're seeing that one. At this point, I haven't done all of my price research and calculations. You will know right away if you look in the description box down below what all of those things are. I'm not entirely sure whether or not this box would be a good value for myself as a Canadian on a six-month subscription. I was definitely excited to see the favorite Castel gelatos. Not a lot of businesses in my area, or really even across the country, carry Faber 
Castell. Not super thrilled to have the Derwent water brush because I have a ton of water brushes and I don't use them. Always happy to have Dr. PH Martin products. And again, that's not something that's easily available up here unless you're ordering from Amazon or paying top dollar at Michael's. I've never seen them offered open stock, so it was interesting to get just one. Again, dye based, probably not light fast. I probably won't get more because I do already have the full set of the India inks, the Bombay India inks from Dr. Page Martin, and those ones are completely light fast, so don't need more of them. If I had gone with the full plus box, I do think the value of those Neocolor crayons would have made it definitely worth it. I see those in different art stores around here. I see those in places like Michael's. I see them online. The price never gets all that cheap. <laughs> so those ones definitely, the plus box is probably worth the price. And I do find that with art snacks, the plus box is worth the price. I just don't have that kind of money right now. So I didn't go all the way with the plus box and I don't need more papers. I have a whole cupboard full of papers. If you got this box, tell me what you think of it. Tell me what colors you got. If you got the plus box for real, what are those Neocolor crayons really like? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Tell me, let me know in the comments down below. And if you didn't get this box, is this a box you would have been interested in getting? Do you plan on maybe no box art boxing it? Let me know, let's discuss it. Send me your video links for no box art box if you do this challenge with any box. I'd love to see them, I'd love to add them to the playlist. Art Addicts Alliance upload day coming up next week. Don't forget to check that out. Not sure yet what I'm doing for the earlier video next week, we shall see. I'd like to thank everybody so much for the support you gave me on the book tag, even though it wasn't really a book thing. I do think I'm going to continue to incorporate book content, but it's it's going to be voiceovers over artwork rather than always putting my face on camera and doing just a completely dedicated booktube video because yeah, the majority of you are my art audience and I want to satisfy everybody and I'm much happier with the blog for going completely book. And thank you guys so much for all the attention my Jazza Box video is getting. Like, holy crap, that is blowing up. You guys rock. If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!